amazing. Here they come. Ben Swift's going to win the sprint here. Up to the line. He gets third world points race championship. That's a stunning. Ben Swift got the silver. He must have thought he was going to win. Yeah, so I started with a free pass from my, my school. Yeah, I really grew to, to love the track cycling and that moved into road cycling as well and uh, from there I started going to junior national championships and, and grew into um, what was Australian teams when I hit my uh, teenage years under 19s. So yeah, uh, it was a long time ago now but um, yeah, it's uh, different people have different paths and when I started, my uh, my father actually used to race cycling when uh, he was a young kid, but we ne I never knew that when I did start. So I just fell across it with my school giving me a free pass, which um, is a bit of uh, fate, I guess. It was certainly a strange year and it's still strange at times now. And I think uh, last year when I, I was in 2020, and you didn't know when the season was gonna start or what your next race was. Uh, I actually got the chance to do a few different things in my training um, and experiment with a couple of things that uh, maybe I wouldn't normally do if I knew what my time frame was. I also uh, had to had to really relax. You had to take things as it come. There was a lot of mental side of things that you had to be really strong with. To normally we're so structured as athletes to know that you've got three weeks or four weeks until your competition, and I've got to do X, Y, and Z. But this was uh, was very different. So having a real balanced structure around you, um, I went out and um, did some other things with friends and family, and played some played some golf and, and that with uh, when I was in Perth, uh, and just tried some different things in my training, different efforts and and different things that kept me stimulated during that period. Um, I grew up with uh, with track cycling as one of my. Uh, foundations and, and bases when I did begin as a junior and I learned all the skills so it never goes away so when I was fit coming off the road uh, in really good physical condition uh, if I really applied myself to the technical aspect of the track I could really really make it work and I found a balance between the two and um, that really worked these days it gets a little bit more challenging with um, the balance between the two but there's still uh, the opportunities with the Madison, which is a 50 kilometer race, or the, the points race, which is 40 kilometers. And I think it still really suits guys that do have those physical abilities that comes from road racing, applying it onto the track. And uh, yeah, it's something that I really love doing, going between the two and the passion that I did have for the track. And uh, I think it showed through all those years that I was able to, to still handle balancing both. Probably a Madison session. Uh, I really, really like trying to replicate and simulate a Madison session um, in a race style. And so one that I normally did that in preparation for a big, big championship was to think about the amount of sprints that I possibly will have to do in the race and how many laps it could possibly take. And culminating that into the session by doing Say in the, in, the, in the actual race there was going to be 10 sprints and I think I would have to contest about six. I'd put, 10, uh, I'd put six sprints into it and I would also put two or three lap takes and, and I would really uh, love to apply what I thought the race would go to physically prepare myself but also mentally it was preparing me as well for what I could do out. And so Madison training was one of, was one of my favourites because you get to share it with a teammate, the, the thrill of slinging someone at high speeds. Um, it's just a, a great event that I'm really passionate about. And, um, yeah, that was probably my favourite. Uh, you can't go past Melbourne in, in 2012. Uh, to win the points race in uh, a world championship in front of your home crowd, there was my uh, parents, friends, my grandparents in the stand, stands and uh, yeah, there's something special to win in front of your home crowd and um, that, that would probably go down as my, as my favourite. This was my 10th, 11th, it depends. Last year we did a COVID Grand Tour which we actually were only in for a week. So um, 11 if you want to count that, 10, 10 proper tries at uh, Grand Tours. Uh, yeah, it's hard to go past the, the 2013 Tour de France, uh, Green Edge, got their first stage win with Simon Guerin, so to be a part of that. Also donned the yellow jersey with Simon and after our win in the team's time trial, uh, to stand there with eight of 
eight of your teammates and, and good friends um, and see an organisation that was quite young at the time uh, achieve that was, was pretty special. And we held the jersey for four days and passed, uh, passed it after two days to Daryl Limpy, which was special as well. So, uh, yeah, t the 2013 Tour de France would be right up there, along with uh, the 2014 Giro with uh, Spain Tuft with the winning the team's time trial, putting Spain into the jersey, Michael Matthews winning the stage, Peter Weening winning the stage. So uh, that was pretty special as well. But um, probably I, I, I really actually enjoy the Vuelta uh, just because I spent so much time in Spain. Uh, I've got residence in Andorra, which is on the border of Spain. And I love the heat coming from Perth, WA. I, I love the heat and uh, the hot weather that uh, Spain comes really uh, suits my characteristics and uh, yeah, I really enjoyed that Grand Tour as well, probably my favourite. It's actually to uh, take a book that I'm going to finish over the over the Grand Tour and uh, I actually have started in the last few years where I actually don't take my laptop um, just so that I don't get caught into watching Netflix and uh, or watching the race back so many times in the highlights and, and those sort of things that um, I take all my, um, put my mobile down at, at the end of the night or after I've done my massage and the certain jobs that we have to do post the, post the race and I actually read and it, uh, it takes me off into a bit of relaxation and, and changes the, the mindset from what is obviously Grand Tour racing is, can be chaotic, there's a lot of uh, physical stresses and mental stresses that come with the day of racing so yeah just really changing it up with a book uh, I find for me is uh, a way of changing that into a relaxing mode. Gears have changed a lot over time. They're getting bigger and bigger. Uh, uh, for the Madison, there's talk of uh, possibly being around the what do you, do you use? Uh, 170 inch. So at the moment, most of my races are between 103 and 107 inch, which is uh, anywhere around a 63. 16 to a 65 66 chain ring set, uh, 16. We, we uh, have moved in the track to using big chain rings with bigger cogs um, so the ratios uh, are a little bit harder to work out if you're still using the smaller chain rings but um, nowadays we're, we're using up to a 67 68 chain ring um, which is really quite big on the track and uh, the gears have shifted a lot, but we will use anywhere from 103 inch to 107 inch. So what you're saying cool. is the um, the chain, chain rings will be bigger than the wheels soon? Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> I have done. I did a lot of pyramid cadence pyramid drills. So uh, it would just be simple things where you might be out, might have 20 or 30 minutes to be able to get on an ergo during your road training, either in the morning as a pre-start, when you when you're moving up the ranks from a from a young rider or or going from smaller races through to bigger races, you're always going to face challenges. You'll face challenges if you're a 20 year old. You'll face challenges as a 35 year old. That that won't stop in professional sport, and it doesn't stop in life that you will face challenges. Uh, the biggest thing is is learning from everything that you do. You've got to you've got to learn. So. When you make a mistake as a young guy, which you might make a lot more mistakes than, than an elder experienced guy, if you learn from that, you'll be better the next time you do it. And I made plenty of mistakes. Plenty of mistakes in races that would cost me a club race or it would cost me a world championship. I've all, um, nearly every pro cyclist, every pro cyclist, not nearly, every pro cyclist has been there and, and, and made a mistake. Um, I, learned from it and I then made sure that I tried not to make that same mistake and I'll give you one example I remember as a young rider in the world championships doing the points race uh, I lost to I had been world champion and I came into this thinking oh, I'm the best and I can win and this Colombian beat me hands down beat me and I got so agitated in the race I got frustrated I was losing my cool couldn't keep a cool head came off, was throwing my helmet down on the ground and the coach said, um, the biggest thing you have to learn is how you control your emotions because that's what lost your race. You weren't, you weren't cool under pressure. And I thought, oh, 
never really thought about cool under pressure because I, had, I was such a young rider, I didn't think of favouritism, guys going out there and following me in the race. I had to learn over the next year how to deal with that because I went into the World Championships in front of my home crowd and I was the favourite again, even though I'd lost the year before. I was the favourite and there was these expectations. And I learned over that year how to control my emotions, how to con keep calm under pressure. And I won the World Championship in, in Melbourne in front of my home crowd, um, which was something really special. But I wouldn't have done that if I hadn't learnt from those mistakes that I did the year before. So the biggest thing is anytime you make a mistake, if it's lose a bike race, it could be something off the bike, maybe you went into a race and went, oh, I didn't eat properly, learn from it, and the next time it'll be better, and you will progress through through elite sport if you do that. Yeah, it's changed a fair bit from uh, just over time and, and sports science. Sports science is probably the biggest one, that there is a, a lot more uh, knowledge out there in ways that you can train. But Probably to this day, it's about applying the things that work for me and what I've learnt over my time uh, riding and applying the new stuff that is being coming from those people that are uh, sports scientists or my coaches. So taking in all their experience and their knowledge uh, and moulding it also into what I believe works for me over my experience and time. So as a young rider, I just go out there and, and just go as hard as I can. It's a lot more structured now. Uh, there's a lot more detail to it. Um, but I still need those days where maybe I just let that go and, and, and go and be the old young Cameron that I uh, used to be, because that's also important to enjoy it, that it's not always just 100% dialed and structured. You've also got to have those fun moments in your, in your training as well. And finding that balance is really important. And that's where I do that with my training now, have the sessions that I really enjoy, plus the sessions that I know I need to from a science point of view to, to make myself prepared in 100% best the way I can for whatever my goal and target is. I am a big stretcher, love my foam roller, um, love a good stretch. Every night I have a bit of a 20, 30 minute routine. It can be watching TV, it can be just before you go to bed, watching, listening to some music. That's my, my go-to is just 20, 30 minutes. It's part of my relaxation before going to sleep as well. Love to just have a stretch, um, get on the foam roller. If you've got one of the massage guns or trigger point balls, you can use all those sorts of things. That's a big one with my routine. Uh, another one is just making sure post uh, your training that you're really looking after the fuel intake that you do have in terms of drinks, hydration, and the correct food if you have some good, clean eating food afterwards, you'll recover so much better for when you have to go again the next day. The biggest thing that uh, advice and, and the thing that I learned is the balance that you have in your, in your overall life. I got to a point that it was just cycling, 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 and I love cycling. That's what I've known since I've grown up and it's uh, a real passion of mine. But I didn't know how to balance that with what I was doing off the bike and that was Making sure you're connected with friends, make sure you you enjoy when you have a rest when you have a rest day. If you've worked really hard, enjoy your rest day. If you want to go, like for me, love a game of golf, love a hit of golf. So if I want to go have a hit of golf on a on a rest day when it's appropriate, um, I, I enjoy that. I I want to go out and um, have a lunch with with my family. Uh, I'm not thinking all the time about riding my bike, riding my bike. And that, that holistic balance is something that's really important because I struggled with that when I was trying to be the best rider that I could, but it was actually making me worse because I didn't have a holistic approach to my life balance. And now I really uh, enjoy those days and spare time that I have to, to enjoy other things. Um, and that's, that is part of being an elite, elite sportsman and elite cyclist as well as on the bike.